वेलकम लर्नर्स आई वेलकम यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एन आई ओ एस एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अ लॉट एंड यूनिट इज फाइव एंड सब पॉइंट इज फाइव पॉइंट फाइव द टॉपिक ये इज द टॉपिक इज इंटर रिलेशनशिप ऑफ रीडिंग एंड राइटिंग मोस्ट ऑफ अस टीच रीडिंग and writing as separate skills but can we read if somebody has not written or can we write if we have not read anything they are interrelated there has got to be something written which can be read out so every writer has a reader and a reader naturally can read only when it is uh, written so today we like to know what is reading and how it is related to writing first of all reading appears to be a very simple skill everybody says go and read it no it's not that easy it is a complex skill complex yes it involves several sub skills you don't believe it i'll tell you it involves number of sub skills before you are able to read a text how we analyze words and know words by sight the moment we look at a word we are able to read it only because we know it learn the names of the letters whether it is p it's t or k all these letters should be known to us then the sounds of the letters which sound is going to be produced if you do not know you can't read say i am reading the sentence point second the sounds of the letters but if i do not know t h e is the how can i read that out so i should know how are these letters spoken what is the sound to break words into sounds so like c a t together it becomes cat so how these sounds are to be pronounced are to be spoken are to be read out is to be known to us before we are able to read something to blend the sounds back together learn words by sight the moment you see the word learn there is no need to read it l e a r n you are able to say learn read fluently and we should read it with a speed which people are able to understand comprehend then read smoothly without any pressure so if we know how to read we have to see which words which letters which sound and then without any pressure without any tension we should be able to read in a manner that our listeners are able to comprehend or we ourselves if we are doing the silent reading we ourselves are able to get meaning to the text read often so it's a complicated it's a complex skill it does not mean that you will learn it once if you are having a good practice you are reading it often certainly you will become a good reader learning new vocabulary learn the meanings of individual words understanding what you read because if you do not understand you will not be able to make others understand what you are reading then the best thing is read for pleasure enjoy reading it there are so many books thousands of books which you enjoy when you read then read to learn new information like we read magazines we read journals we need books from the library and through which we get a lot of information use reading to communicate with others say if you want to talk about a particular topic then you should read something read from the library read from the newspaper about that topic 
so that you have more information, better collection of vocabulary when you talk to somebody else. And very easy, very interesting part of reading is, it is spread all around us. You go and buy a biscuit packet, you find a lot of material to read. Anything you buy, wrappers, they convey so much, they have so much treasure for reading. Then types of reading texts. Sometimes people feel that our parents or our family or our background is such, we do not have any text for reading. How can we read? We do not have any material to read. This is all spread all around us. Read novels, stories, non-fiction, fiction, textbooks, travel books, which give a lot of information about new places, encyclopedias to collect new information, journals, magazines, maps, GPS system, you must be using maps nowadays in your mobiles, dictionaries, forms, when you go to an institute, you fill up a form, you can write only, you can fill up only when you read it, applications, questionnaires, without reading a questionnaire, how can you answer the question? So, you read that first, then you write brochures, catalogs, advertisements in the TV, in the newspaper, on the roads, on the hoardings, notices. You go to an institute, you go to any society, if you read, notice a lot of thing about that or you will be updated. Labels on the things that you purchase, posters. Displays at airports and stations which are very important. Then catalogs, hoardings, reports, proposals, messages on mobiles, signboards, wrappers, slogans, names of the shops, prescriptions, names of medicines. If you can't read the names of medicine, maybe you may put yourself or your uh, loving ones in problem. Bulletin boards, visiting cards. Nowadays, you find everybody carrying a visiting card. So, you have a lot of material to read around. Letters, invitation cards, our friends, our relatives, schools, offices, whenever they celebrate some function, they invite us and we read it. Forms, advertisements, back cover of a book, the level on a bottle. And price also we have to know, shopping list, without reading how can you buy the things? Questions on the question paper, very important. So, if you do not read the questions, naturally, how can you write the correct answer? Then, what is the relationship between reading and writing? How are they related? They are related like anything, they are complementary, like they have the same orientation. You begin from left and go to right. The way you read a language, you write the language in the same way, then letter formation. So, you form the letter while writing and when you have written it, you read it out. So, letter formation is also the same words, they are written the same, they are spoken, they are read, spellings, sentences, grammar, styles, punctuation audience centered, reader writer relationship, all these things they bring them so close, they should not be taught in isolation. Say for example, I want to teach my children how to write a letter, this is a writing task, but until less I give some letters, some specimen letters to my students to read, so that they know the particular style so that they know the paragraphing, so that they know the style of letter writing and once they do it, they become a better writer. Then each skill contributes to the other. Both skills enhance engagement and reasoning. Both involve using knowledge of language structure. When you read, you should know what is the structure, where will this punctuation mark go, where will this or which words are to be read together, including word structure and text structure. 
that is what is a syntax and what is a style they go together. Then how do the reading traits translate to writing means whatever is in reading how can we take it into re, uh, writing and reading we read only other topics which are interesting to us. So, first of all we connect to the topic in writing also in writing also we connect to the topic writing process organization graphs. So, when we write something we have to go through a particular development of the text creates a picture plan mind mapping. So, when you read a particular topic you have to think what are you going to get here what is new here for you same way when you write you make a picture of your theme your point then you decide now I am going to write it like this determine the evidence supporting details. So, if you want to get some supporting details you need to read read and read then self question self question what am I writing about how much should I write and where should I begin where should I end. So, initially a writer as well as reader they visualize that I am going to get this information here I am going to get this much fun here then determine importance make inference in reading we make inferences on the basis of the text that we have read or our own background audience or readers concerns counter arguments. So, if you think readers will not like it you have counter arguments also your language should be your style should be persuasive you should be speaking in a or reading in a tone that attracts that binds your reader. Then you cannot write something until unless you have done a lot of research you have read a lot of material then diction words selection of words which words would you use you cannot decide until unless you have read a lot syntax what is going to be the order of the words in a sentence cohesiveness how are you going to connect the text synthesize how are you going to join different points together with the use of the words connectors say if you say I want to leave because I could not leave therefore. So, these pointers are to be used then monitor comprehension when you have written something you have to check whether what you have written is of the level audience or readers can understand. So, you have to check whether this is a comprehensible one or is it so confusing that rather than making things clear you are confusing the reader. So, monitor the comprehension yourself then reading and writing are interdependent processes they are essential to each other and mutually beneficial. If you read well you write well if you write well you read well reading and writing should occur naturally to construct meaning in everyday situation tips for teaching reading and writing. In fact we are not able to pay due attention to these skills either we teach them separately reading as a separate skill writing as a separate skill or we do not teach them as a skill we assign them task this is your reading task this is your writing task write an essay write a letter write an article write a short story but we do not teach them how to write it you have learnt a lot about interrelationship of reading and writing would you like to get some tips how they can be combined together how they can help each other in fact most of the teachers or the learners for that matter they do not think them to be complementary. First of all when we give something to read tell them why are they reading 
let it not be a futile activity. Sometimes we take them to the library, very good. Ask the librarians to give them story books, very good, wonderfully good, doing well. Ask them to read the story, but let them know why should they read. So that goal, the target, the objective should be clear to the learners. They should know what are they reading it for, whether it is for the language or is it for the format or is it for the diction or is it for the content. So set the goal. Before you give them a reading task, tell them learners we are going to read this text because we want to know this, this, this. And after you have done that, assign writing tasks. So give them writing tasks along with the reading tasks. Say they have read a story. Then you can ask them simple questions, number one. You can ask, give them fill in the blanks, where they fill up uh, lexical items or words which are from the text. You can give them word meanings, opposites, plurals, etc. You can ask them to make sentences. Then you can give them jigsaw puzzles, crossword puzzles. Then you can ask them further questions based on writing skills only. If you were in his position, what decision would you have taken? Or as that character, write a letter to your friends, further extrapolatory writing. So when they have read something, say they have read an article on save environment. You can ask them to prepare a plan to solve environmental problem in their surroundings. What efforts can be done by them? How can they make their environment good? So assign writing tasks or maybe you give them a story and ask them to write a poem. You give them a poem, ask them to write a story. You give them an article and ask them to write a story. So, when they read, you can ask them to change the form of the text also. Then base the writing tasks either from the content or form of the reading material. As I told you earlier, when they read, they should know why they are reading. If it is for the form, let them note down what is so specific of that form. Say if they are writing an invitation letter and they are going to read a number of say 3 or 4 or 5 invitation letters, they will be clear that what are they reading these let invitation letters for, what they have to check, what they have to see. Say the format, the form in which the dates are to be written, the space between the words, the selection of the words, style of the content. So when they will read it only for the form, most important things that they will learn will be how to write an invitation letter. But if you ask them to read it for content, then they will focus on content words only. Then you can ask them questions from the content only. Say they have read a notice. You can ask them questions on the content base and then they can answer those questions. So written work can also be done along with the reading of the notices. Then if you are asking them to read say for debate, then let them read some debates. How to argue, how to counter argue, how to present your views strongly, how to accept the truth from the other points from the other speakers or the writers. So when you make them read, let them know what are they reading it for. So if it is new words, then let them know how to find out the meaning for those words or the family of those words, then this is very important. The students who 
understand this fact that if you are better writer you will become a good reader. If you are a good reader you will become a better writer. How? If you want to write well, if you want to be an excellent writer, first thing you have to do is read, read and read and not one kind of literature, all varieties so that you can choose the style that suits you the most. Then better readers, if you read well, if you read a lot, if you read with full concentration, then certainly you will become a good writer because you will have a lot of ideas with you. When you know, when you have to write, what is the first stage? Brainstorming. So, good readers can have better ideas during brainstorming. Say, I do not know anything about a topic. I have not read anything about that and when I want to write about it, how can I find out the points? So, for brainstorming, it is very essential that we must have read that topic or read that material or content or topic before so that we have some ideas with us. It is important to remember to read while we write and to write while we read. As I told you earlier that these are complementary skills. Simply reading without making down points is of no use because what we read after some time we forget most of it. But if we want to retain it, what we have to do is we have to write, write down some points, make notes and if you have taken notes, it will help you write. So, these two skills or these two processes, reading process and writing process, they go hand in hand, they go together. And Bacon was right when he said, Reading maketh a full man, writing an exact man. So, if you read a lot, if you read material from different writers, you become a full man, good. You become a knowledgeable person. You have got points with you all the time. But if you start writing, you know the truth. How much can you retain after reading it? So, when you put it in your own words, they become your own and make sense to teach the two skills together. As a rule, we should try to teach like speaking and listening, they go together. One speaks, another listens. In the same way, reading and writing skills, they go together. One person writes something, another reads. One reads and then writes. So, many of the terms and concepts found in the reading standard are also included in the writing standards. So, what you read, you are writing, so not much problem. Then writing is closely related to reading, both can reinforce each other. So, they help each other. As I told you earlier, they reinforce reading, reinforces writing and writing reinforces reading. So, they help each other. Writing enhances and demonstrates reading comprehension in all content areas. Once you write, once you use a term, it is easy for you to understand next time that term is used. So, when you read the word, it becomes your own. You can use it the way you want, you can play with it, but you only read. And in our previous lesson, we talked about active and passive vocabulary. So, if you read, things keep on accumulating in your passive vocabulary. But when you write that down, it becomes your active vocabulary. When you speak those words, those phrases, those terms, they become your active vocabulary. So, from reading to writing is also changing our passive vocabulary into active vocabulary. Thank you.